Today we are going to show you the best motherboards you can buy right now. We have analyzed the market and listed these 5 best motherboards for you. For more amazing tech product reviews and suggestions please subscribe to our channel. We will try our best to present you with the best tech products you can buy now. Products links in the description box. In this video, we'll be covering the best motherboards, including what they are, why you may want to choose them, and some of the best options out there. Number 5 The ASUS ROG Strix X670E E Gaming Wi-Fi is a powerful and efficient motherboard that offers exceptional performance and connectivity. It is specifically designed for high-end hardware and extreme overclocking. Out of all the Ryzen 7000 series, the X670E chipset provides the most premium and feature-rich experience. The motherboard is equipped with 18 plus 2 paired power stages rated at 110A to deliver power to your AMD CPU, ensuring it runs smoothly. Additionally, it supports widespread PCIe 5.0 and comes with a large ComboSync M.2 heatsink that provides a big surface area for cooling to keep PCIe 5.0 SSDs running efficiently. The ROG Strix X670E E Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard offers several conveniences to the building process. It comes with a PCIe slot Q release button that makes it easy to remove the graphics card, as well as an integrated power button for performing a pretest before assembling the entire system. It also includes spare M.2 thermal pads to ensure future replacement drives run smoothly. The rear I.O. panel of the motherboard has a total of 13 ports, all of which are USB 3.2 compatible. The front USB headers can support up to 9 ports in total, some of which are USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 and 3.2 Gen 1 compatible. The board has two PCIe 5.0 Ready X16 slots that are designed to house the latest GPUs. It also has two X4 M.2 slots for those looking to purchase a new Gen 5 SSD and take advantage of the blazing fast speeds that come with the generational upgrade. Overall, the ASUS ROG Strix X670E E Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard is an excellent choice for those who need USB ports, high-end hardware performance, and extreme overclocking capabilities. It is compatible with two NVIDIA RTX 4090s, making it an ideal choice for gamers and professionals who require exceptional graphics processing power. Number 4 MSI MPG Z790 Edge MSI has released a new line of motherboards called MPG Z790 which feature 13th generation Intel Core processors with up to 24 cores and 32 threads on a single CPU. This new generation has improved the number of efficiency cores, and the L3 cache has been significantly increased to 36 megabytes. More importantly, the memory frequency will support DDR5-5600 MHz out of the box, but DDR4 is also possible, and we are currently testing a motherboard that supports this. The chipset will have more I.O. lanes, but the number of PCIe 5.0 lanes on the CPU will remain the same. This gives AMD an advantage by giving SSDs their own PCIe 5.0 lanes. The 16 PCIe 5.0 lanes on a 13th gen board can be split between the main GPU slot and the M.2 slots. MSI has incorporated Wi-Fi 6E, the latest wireless networking solution, into all Z790 chipset motherboards. M.2 storage has also increased, and the MSI motherboard we tested can now hold up to 5 M.2 units for even more storage. The MPG series is one of the more premium models among gamers with a 16 plus 1 power phase design with 90A SPS and dual 8-pin CPU power connectors, the MPG Z790 Edge Wi-Fi is capable of handling any game you throw at it. The 13th generation of Intel Core processors is led by the 13th generation Intel Core i9-13900K, their fastest ever desktop CPU. There are six unlocked 13th generation Intel Core desktop processors available, with clock speeds running up to 5.8 GHz over a maximum of 24 cores and 32 threads. Number 3 Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Extreme The Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Extreme, which is the direct successor to the Z690 Aorus Extreme, and boasts a premium feature set, including support for DDR5-8000 memory, dual Thunderbolt 4 Type-C, as well as 10 GBE and Wi-Fi 6E connectivity. Sitting at the top of Gigabyte's Z790 range of motherboards, the Z790 Aorus Extreme is designed for Intel's 13th and 12th generation Core Series processors, and as such, 
benefits from advancements such as PCIe 5.0, native USB 3.2G 2X2 connectivity through a front panel header, and 10X USB 3.2G 2 Type-A ports directly located on the back panel. The rear panel cover features a 2.8-inch digital LCD monitor, which displays real-time system information such as CPU temperature, CPU clock speed, memory clock speed, and VRM temperatures. Typically a feature on high-end premium models such as this, the LCD is a nice touch, the Z790 Aorus Extreme, all around the edging of the board, features right-angled headers, connectors, and power inputs. Designed to allow users to plug a cable in at a right angle, the power delivery on the Z790 Aorus Extreme, Gigabyte has gone for a large 20 plus 1, phase design, with premium componentry expected from a board of this caliber. For the CPU, Gigabyte has included 20x Renesis RAA2201054010105A smart power stages, which operate in a teamed configuration and are driven by a Renesis RAA229131 PWM controller. There's also a single RAA2201054015A power stage for the SoC. Interestingly, Gigabyte has employed a team setup for the VRM and not a full 20 phase direct configuration but the output equates to a maximum of 2100A for the CPU to play with, which is overkill. Number 2 The ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 Hero is a very well-built, well-equipped, and good-looking motherboard. From the 40 gigabits per second ports to the flagship class audio, you're not going to find many boards that look better or have better specifications. But priced at $630, you can find boards with hardware for less. We run into four unreinforced drum slots with a single locking mechanism up top. The Hero supports up to 128GB of DDR5, with speeds listed up to a blazing fast DDR5-7800 plus, OC. We didn't have any issues with our two kits up to DDR5-6000. It's clear, at least on paper, that there's more headroom left. As always, your mileage may vary, so stick to the memory QVL list at extremely high speeds for the best chance of success. Above the drum slots, on the top edge, are the first four, of eight, four-pin fan headers. All of the headers support PWM and DC-controlled devices. The CPU headers automatically select the proper mode, while the rest of the ports require manual adjustment. Both the chassis and CPU fan headers output up to 1A-12W with the W underscore pump plus header outputs up to 3A-36W. You can control the fans through the BIOS or armory crate. Off to the right is the two-character Q-code display and the four-light QLED display. These both serve to tell you what's going on during the board's post-process. If something goes wrong, one of the four LEDs, CPU, boot, VGA, RAM, will remain lit, and you'll have a more detailed code on the Q code showing you where the problem is. Working our way down the right edge of the board, we run into the first of three three pin ARGB headers, as well as the retry, start, and flex key buttons. Next, we hit the 24 pin ATX connection to power the board, along with a six pin PCIe connector. You need the PCIe power connector plugged into the board if you plan to use the 60WPD slash QC4 plus charging capability. Otherwise, you're limited to 27W of charging output. Last but not least, on the top half is the front panel USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, 20 gigabits per second, Type-C connector. Number 1 MSI Meg X670E Godlike The Godlike offers rather basic packaging, including an image of the board on the front alongside appropriate branding and mention of the chipset CPU along the bottom. The Godlike offers plenty of mirrored surfaces, and we certainly will remember it's a godlike platform with all of the branding put in place. That being said, the board does offer heatsink coverage for the entire VRM and chipset area, along with the M.2 connections. On the backside, we have a full backplate. The rear I.O. includes a host of buttons up top that allow you to clear CMOS and flash BIOS if needed. Moving down, we have what we assume is DP support by a USB-C, perhaps on both ports. We then run into 7 USB 3.2 Type-A and both RF45 LAN ports, 2.5B and 10B. Towards the bottom, we have the Wi-Fi 6E connections and analog audio outputs. Across the bottom of the board, we have several switches for overclocking and a 6-pin additional power connection. Across the bottom of the board, we have several switches for overclocking and a 6-pin additional power connection. 
On the far end, we pick up the power and reset buttons, followed by fan headers and front panel chassis connections. Around the edge, MSI has tucked away these connections under the heatsink awning. These include 8 SATA and 2 USB 3.2 internal headers. Getting to the top of the board, we have both 6-pin and 24-pin connections and two more USB 3.2 headers. Across the top of the board, we have the debug LED and two fan headers. 8-pin power inputs have been placed here as well. MSI's Click BIOS has stayed with X670E boards, giving consumers a familiar interface for godlike when tuning their new Zen 4 system. Easy Mode includes a complete board overview with abilities to enable EXPO, change boot order, etc. All of the best motherboards are on our list. Please click the thumbs up icon if you found this video to be helpful. Which motherboards would you choose? Let us know what you think by leaving a remark below. Thank you for your time click the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you found this video to be useful in any way so you won't miss any upcoming updates. All of you who viewed before that I hope to see you in the upcoming video.